Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass Algebra 2. In this video we're going to go over how to use summation notation, otherwise known as sigma notation. So we're going to do this by breaking down each part of sigma notation and we're going to solve some examples and then there's going to be some practice questions at the end of this video that you could try on your own. First let's just go over what summation notation even means and what it looks like. So all it is is it allows us to write a series in an easy and shorthanded way. So, so we're actually kind of learning about two different definitions here. We're, we're, learning, we're learning about summation notation, so that's what we see right here. This is summation notation. And then we're also learning about what a series is, which is kind of like, which we're already kind of familiar with. So if we, we've already done sequences. Uh, if you haven't yet, you could check videos on, out on that. So, so now um, we just have this notation where we're we're like identifying the sum. So let's say we have this as arithmetic series um, two, and we're adding two to each number. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten. But now let's say we wanted to add all those numbers together. Two plus four plus six plus eight plus ten. And we can keep going. So that's kind of what summation notation can easily um, tell us to do. So we could easily write that in shorthand. So, so before we get into that, because that's a, a different kind of a more advanced topic. Uh, let's first go ahead, get through this video. This is just on how to recognize what summation notation uh, is and how to calculate what it means. So, so we're just gonna identify each part of this notation right here. So if you notice, so this is our sigma. So that's when we know the sigma is gonna mean like the sum. The sigma is like the, the summation, the sum of this expression right here. So next we have these numbers above and below the sigma. So down here, this is kind of like our lower limit. So what that means is we're going to be taking every number starting at 1 and ending at 3, our upper limit, and plugging in each value for n. And then we're going to be summing those each together. So, so that means we're going to be plugging in 1 plus 1 and 2 plus 1 all the way up to 3 plus 1 because this is our upper limit. So we know that we're going to start here. It's kind of like our range. It gives us our guideline of what we're going to be summing. And then here on the right, this is just the expression we're going to be summing. So if this doesn't make sense, you know, don't worry too much. I think it's easy to pick up once you see an example. So. Here is our first example, and it says evaluate the sum of n plus 1 from the value starting at 1 to 3. So this is the same example we were just looking at, but now we're actually going to solve it. So all that means, remember this is our lower limit, this is the upper limit, and we're just going to be plugging in these different values for n and then summing, and then solving each little equation and solving. So here we have 1 plus 1. Here, then we have 2 plus 1, and then we have 3 plus 1. So notice, so when we say different values of n, notice we just plugged in this is n over here, this is n equals 1, this is n equals 2, and then this is n equals 3. And that's that's all we need to do. That's Those are the only numbers that we need to plug in for n because that's what this summation tells us. So now we just need to calculate every little mini little group here within the parentheses together. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, and then add these all together and we get 5 plus 4 which gives us 9 and that's our answer. So so summation notation isn't hard. It's all about summing and arithmetic. The only thing is you just have to know how to read them. Be aware of what is the lower limit and the upper limit and what you need to plug in for n and these can be different values too. This could be a k and then you have a k here. So actually let's look at an example. I just mentioned that um, that involves k. So here's our next example. We're just going to do one more of these and it asks us to find the sum of 4 times 2 to the k for the values of k from 2 through 5. So right these are this is the lower limit and the upper limit for k. So when we do this, let's write like let's write all of this out. So we have 4 times 2, so this is to the k. But now 
We're actually, our range is going to start at 2, so here we're going to plug in 2 for K. And this is like one little group, one little family. And now for the next value of K, we're going to go to 3. So 4 times 2 raised to the 3rd power. 4 times 2 raised to the 4th power. And plus 4 times 2 raised to the 5th power. So we stop at 5 because that is where our upper limit is at. And then again, we could just um, calculate each little each little group, and then add them all together. So you can use your calculator. So if you plug these into your calculator, this guy you're gonna get 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128. And when you sum these all together, you're gonna get 240. And that's our answer. So if you're looking for more, check out the practice questions right here. The answers are up on my blog, mathsucks.org, and in the description below if you want to check those out. And if this video helped you, please give it a like and subscribe. Thanks for stopping by. Happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.